I know I've brought you here many times before, but this time, it's not an airplane I want you to see. Hey everyone, it's Cashew. Today's adventure brings us to Dayton, Ohio to the National Museum of the United States Air Force. There are a couple of items on loan here from the National Cryptologic Museum, and I wanted to share them with you because these two machines, along with one other, were instrumental in ending the war by at least two years and saving countless lives. And one of the machines that's not here today, but I'll tell you about it, was made here in Dayton. So let's go take a look. Our adventure starts here. And because we're living in different times, masks are required here at the museum. And this is why I wanted to show you the Enigma machine and the Sagaba machine. Both were used to encrypt messages. One was successful and one wasn't. On the left is the Enigma machine, and that was used by the Germans. And just like the Alberti code wheel, it created multiple polyalphabetical substitute ciphers. For those of you who wonder what's the difference between codes and ciphers, a code can substitute for a whole word or idea. For example, XYZ might be a code for take off at midnight. A cipher, on the other hand, changes each letter of a message to make it unreadable. A cipher for take off at midnight might read something like what you see here on this sign. The Enigma was originally a commercial entity and was marketed to businesses and banks for encryption but failed, so the military adopted it. Four times a year, a key list was sent that lasted for three months so they would know which code to use because the three wheels there that you see could create 150 million 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 combinations. Unbeknownst to the Germans, the Enigma machine had one flaw and I'll tell you about that later. A breakthrough came when a German soldier defected and gave an Enigma machine to the Polish military and they in turn shared their information with the British government. The British government established a place where cryptologists could try to decode and figure out the Enigma machine's inner workings. And that took place at an area called Bletchley Park. And it was also known as Station X and was located 50 miles north of London. Many people were responsible for breaking the Enigma code, but two stand out in history. One being Gordon Welshman, who worked in Hut 6, and another fellow by the name of Alan Turing, who worked in Hut 8. And Turing is actually considered to be the father of computer science. Turing is credited with creating a machine known as the BOMB, B-O-M-B-E, and it was named after an earlier Polish code-breaking machine. And it was created by National Cash Register of Dayton, Ohio. And essentially what the BOMB would do is eliminate all possible encryptions from intercepted messages. It was said the bomb could decode three to 4,000 Enigma messages a day, and on a good day could decode a message in 15 minutes. Turing noticed that certain words would come up in every report, and once they figured out what it was, like Weather Report or Heil Hitler, then they discovered they could build from there and eventually decode the message. And this is a typical Enigma intercept from the Bletchley Park operation in England. These messages were transmitted in Morse code as groups of five letters, which were easily intercepted but were impossible to understand without sophisticated decryption. And here's an example of an Enigma message that had been decrypted. And this is the machine known as Sagaba. It was used by the Americans to create ciphers. And like Enigma, it was rotor-driven and it was electromechanical. But that's as far as the similarities went. Unlike the Enigma, Sagaba was never broken. Sagaba was developed in the 1930s and was used from the 1940s until 1959. For two months, the Germans tried to break the Sagaba code and couldn't and gave up. To give you a comparison, the Enigma could do permutations 3 times 10 to the 114th power, whereas the Sagaba could do permutations 2 times 10 to the 999th power. Most Sagabas were destroyed to protect their design and only a few exist today. The secret patent for Sagaba was declassified in 1996. Another difference between the Enigma and Sagaba machines is that it took two people to operate Enigma 
where only one person was needed to operate Sagaba. For the Enigma machine, it took one person to type the message and another to write it down. The Sagaba, however, printed the letters on a paper tape, allowing a single person to operate it. I mentioned earlier that the Enigma had a flaw, and here it is. When it was creating a cipher, the letters they used would represent any other letter in the alphabet except itself. So say, for example, they used the letter C. It could represent A, B, D through Z, but C would never represent C itself. And once the team at Bletchley Park discovered that, they took advantage of that, and it helped them break the code. Sadly, both Alan Turing and Gordon Welchman, who were instrumental in shortening the war and saving countless lives, met with tragic endings themselves. And if you'd like to find out more about both of them or Enigma, I'd recommend a movie and two books. For the movie, I would recommend The Imitation Game, starring Benedict Cumberbatch and Kiara Knightley. And Benedict Cumberbatch stars as Alan Turing, so you get a kind of a sense of his personality. As far as the books are concerned, I'd recommend The Hut Six Story by Gordon Welchman himself, and I'd recommend The Code Book by Simon Singh if you want to find out more about ciphers and cryptology as a subject. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. In the description box down below, I have links to my PayPal, my Patreon, and my Teespring. So until next time, everyone, this is Cashew signing off.